Pro Rel has entered the U.S. soccer landscape in the form of the USL. Kind of, sort of, not really. The long-rumored option for the second, third, and fourth tier of U.S. soccer is being put up for a vote in the coming week. Well, they're, they're actually kind of voting on keeping this idea just on the table. Not actually implementing it, but just seeing if people still want to maybe one day talk about it. But if they vote to keep it on the table, they can circle back to it in a few years and then have another vote to implement pro rel in a way that definitely won't get pushback or anger from owners to the point of people just walking away and saying, no, we're not going to do it. Meaning that by the time the U.S. men's national team wins the 2026, 2030, and 2034 World Cup, we might have pro rel in the USA. But it's not real pro rel because it's only within a closed system of itself. And it's, it doesn't include MLS and there's no real top league. But MLS sucks, though, so we want to see it fail. Um, did, I, did I hit all the talking points? I think I did, right? I think you, I think you hit it all. I think all right. Did. Let's put banter aside. Let's talk about really what's happening right now. Uh, the current proposal is such that they are going to vote on the idea that this option is a legitimate model that can be sustainable long-term to, to, to keep their league afloat, so to say. Uh, they're talking about having massive expansion over the next coming years, much like MLS has recently, to get enough teams to make three divisions through which teams can move up or down based on their performances in the year before. There are still lots of hurdles before they can clear this out. Um, you know, I will shout out our friend U.S. Soccer Reform, who has brought up some things like uh, territory rights, which without a ton of information uh, on my side, to my understanding is the fact that you cannot have two teams within the same local area uh, at USL level. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Somebody can probably correct me. Somebody probably will. Um, but it does lead us to have a few questions before we move on. So let's hit these, these pro rel talking points. Let's start with a positive. Is this good and will it work? What what good can we take out of this? I want to turn it to you first. I guess if we're trying to look for the positives here, this is a really good step to see whether or not people will care about ProRail in the US. This is a perfect opportunity for all those people saying that the sport will blow up way more if there is more at stake in a promotion relegation system as opposed to an MLS type system where there's nothing to lose really because you can finish in dead last and then still stay within the league and have no really repercussions for it. So I guess now there is there's an incentive to have to play every game and not just say, all right, well, we'll try again next season. I think that's uh, that the, I think that's a good aspect of it. Obviously, that's a nice part of promotion relegation. Uh, and I'm sure we will cover plenty of the negatives coming up soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I think promotion relegation is good from a USL perspective in that it can differentiate itself now a bit from MLS if it wants that chance to kind of build up and try to close the gap between the value and like the salaries of MLS versus the rest of US USL. This is an opportunity for them to do so and do something different. It may not necessarily work. It may not stick. But I feel like the current plan that they had going wasn't going to really help them long term. So I think it's good that they're considering other options. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think when we I, I think we're going to talk a little bit about how it differentiates and what it means uh, in a little bit. For me personally, um, I I've been a part of soccer through all different levels from the college game down to coaching at the grassroots level. And uh, you can definitely see how something like this would encourage investment in a, in a grassroots environment, right? Right now you have the richest of the rich buying into the top division uh, at a premium to say that I'm here, whatever coming with that, of course, are the, I don't know if I'd say expectation, but there are the second teams, the academies, the things that are starting to pop up a little bit more frequently. But now you can do that at a local level. Right now in MLS, that is happening in big, major metropolitan areas, which means the people like in Lexington, Kentucky, for example, or uh, in areas that don't have that big 
urban environment that MLS wants these teams to be in don't really have that direct pathway to a pro environment. Now, that being said, I do know that I'll go back to Lexington again because I was literally a part of it. There are now pathways to the top of these teams. So you can join the LFC or LSC now it's called um, youth system play all the way through and get signed to a first team contract for the third division team. You can do that. Women's team is the same deal. Pittsburgh Riverhound has the same thing. Riverhounds have an entire academy. I mean, there are definitely levels to um, think the, the way things have changed over the last couple of years. So what I think you see is a, a if this were to go through is a, a much larger investment at the lower leagues, it'll give much more people a chance to be involved. Um, and, and to to have a, a shot to get to the top of whatever that system looks like. Um, that being said, uh, the one thing I would say would flip that script, so to say, is if you do look, and, and we'll use England as the example because a lot of people do, in a league with promotion relegation, the thing that you care about most is not promoting from within or promoting from the bottom up. It is staying in the league, paying to stay in the league. So while you would encourage people to have that step up, you're also asking your ownership to disregard, for lack of a better term, uh, that model of youth players through the system to move on and instead just kind of promise that idea there. And there are some people who will do that. I know. And again, I keep going back to Lexington and Lexington has this idea that they want to achieve success with 75% homegrown talent out of the bluegrass area. Is that going to work? I have no idea. I mean, they're year one, right? But you're, you're then asking every owner to kind of balance that. And yes, there might be a, physical pathway to do it but how realistic is it does it get better does it get worse does it stay the same i don't quite know that's one of the questions that i think still lives in the uh in the ethos so to speak <coughs> oh, <excuse me. clears throat> um 